Hey, Grace Jill Nation, Sully here with the Barbell Prescription, keeping you strong, fit, and healthy in your 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond. Thanks for subscribing. In the last few years, we've seen a gradual shift in the attitude of physicians and allied healthcare professionals toward the use of strength training to maintain health and fitness and combat the degenerative diseases of aging. Data continues to accumulate in the biomedical literature on the safety and utility of heavy strength training for people in their 50s and beyond. We've had prospective clients show up with prescriptions from their doctors for strength training. Doctors attend our camps and clinics to learn more about our approach to exercise medicine. Several Gracedale athletes are physicians and the clinical experience with this modality is accumulating and overwhelming. More coaches and physical therapists are training more masters in their practices than ever before, and with great results. But we still have a lot of work to do. In recent months, I've seen several instances of pushback. We recently had a client who developed chest pain after a set of heavy bench presses. I thought it was probably musculoskeletal. It was, but I sent him to the ER anyway where his workup for cardiac disease was negative and his heart function was superb. But he was told by his cardiologist, and I kid you not, your heart is fine, but it can't take much more of this weightlifting stuff. This, this weightlifting, 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 weightlifting stuff. Stuff, 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 stuff. Or an email from a subscriber telling me that his mother was told by a family doctor that she could do strength training, but she had to lift light weights for high reps. That's not strength training, that's muscular endurance training. Or a prospective client who wanted to join but was warned off at the last minute by her chiropractor. Or another who was told that the training would, quote, give her a stroke or a heart attack. Or a nonagenarian orthopod telling one of my strongest, long-standing, and most accomplished masters, a lady who could have picked him up and crushed him like a soda can, that she shouldn't lift heavy. Or a post from a colleague, a radiologist, lecturing all of us silly coaches about how dangerous deadlifts are for the back. Now we see this kind of nonsense far less often than we used to, but we still see it. And we've done what we can about it. We've pointed out the mountain of data on strength training and healthy aging. We've published a book with hundreds of scientific citations, and we've published invited evidence-based reviews in peer-reviewed journals. We've demonstrated on the platform that this training approach is productive and safe, a powerful and transformative medicine for healthy aging. And we will continue to do these things. But you have a role to play here too. And that role is to simply ask the following question. How do you know that? When somebody, like say a doctor or a loved one or a so-called fitness professional, tells you that strength training is bad for you in some way, or contraindicated for somebody your age, or that squats will damage your knees, or deadlifts will make your heart explode, just look them right in the eye and ask them, how do you know that? Now, here's something you need to know before you pose this question. I'm a doctor is not a satisfactory reply. Your response to this gambit should be to ask them how much training they've had in exercise medicine and exercise physiology, or if they are up to date with the extensive research on strength training in older adults, which says that it is safe, effective, and necessary. While they're stammering out their response, you can ask them if they've read the extensive peer-reviewed papers on this topic published in Up to Date. Both of them. You can ask them if they've read the Barbell Prescription with its hundreds of scientific citations. You can ask them if they've read the Cochrane Review by Mangione, the meta-analysis by Stibe showing that high intensities were superior in older adults, the systematic review by Raymond et al. showing the same thing, or the various position statements published by a number of medical specialty associations on the topic. You can look at this and other material yourself. You can Watch our journal club at youtube.com slash gracedeal. You can do your own research and you can ask your doctor and yourself 
if he knows half as much as you do about the topic of strength training as medicine. Finally, you can show your doctor your training log and see if he betrays any inkling that it represents continuous improvement in various physical performance and lifestyle parameters that correlate strongly with your health and well-being, or that it shows the precise, careful, and rational manipulation of frequency, formulation, route of administration, and dosage of your exercise medicine, and how you've responded to it. Ask your doctor just exactly what should have been done differently and just exactly why, and based on just exactly what peer-reviewed evidence, and his own experience in improving the strength, mobility, power, and muscle mass of his own patient population. The results of this interrogation will not surprise you, although they may in fact shock and traumatize your provider, but the value of this approach goes far beyond a dialogue about your exercise medicine prescription. Because you, as the patient, always have both the right and the responsibility to interrogate both the available literature and your doctor on what is actually known and exactly how it is applied to you in any medical situation, not just your exercise prescription. Try to remember who's working for whom here. Does this mean that you should not listen to your doctor or that you should be a contentious patient? Of course not. You go to the doctor for their expertise and skill, and at some point, you must make an informed and intelligent decision to submit to recommended care, or not. Just as the physician must make an informed and intelligent treatment plan that respects your values, your lifestyle, and your prerogatives. But this shared decision-making involves both of you, and it means both of you have to do your homework. When it comes to strength training for health and fitness in 2020, it is still unfortunately the case that you've probably done far more homework than your doctor. As a medical student, I got perhaps four hours of exercise physiology in four years, and from what I've seen, the curricula aren't too much better today, even though it is increasingly clear that exercise is the single most powerful medicine in our armamentarium. You can't do anything about med school curricula, but if you're told that you cannot do heavy progressive resistance training by a health professional, make sure that provider is offering informed and thoughtful medical advice based on the most recent data and thinking on the topic, not just his stock expression that reflects his own ossified, uninformed, and biased attitudes about exercise. How do you know that? Who knows? Maybe you'll both learn something. Keep watching. We've got more great content about healthy aging and exercise medicine coming right at you.